I'm a vegan traveling in Tokyo and I'm going to put Google Map Review to the test to find out the best vegan food in Tokyo, Japan that you would travel for 30 minutes and that's actually one of the reviews we'll be looking at today. There are so much vegan food in Tokyo, it will be insane trying to fit in as many as 24 locations in less than a week but guess what? I did it! Starting off with ramen at one of the most popular ramen spots for vegans Ooh. is the fully vegan bistro Jangara. Phenomenal atmosphere and design. Food was extremely quick, serving sizes great. Would travel 30 minutes away. 5 stars. This chef needs kindness. He not friendly to Asian guests, but I can't understand it at all. When he see the pretty woman and then he change his attitude. 2 stars. Who do I even trust? We ordered the vegan karabon, which is a rich, spicy tonkatsu ramen, and the vegan kobunshan, which is tonkatsu ramen with fried garlic oil, and also three cute gyoza. These two ramen bowls were straight up my alley because I love intense and strong flavor, and the broth was so thick and viscous. So flavorful. The rich umami packed broth was perfectly balanced with chewy noodles, soy meat fresh vegetables and wood ear mushroom. Slurping time. The fried garlic oil really made the broth extremely fragrant. It looks so real. The soy meat was more on the chewy side but it soaked up the broth really well like a fried tofu pouch. I tried a bit of the spicy vegan karabon. It was very flavorful as well and has a nice kick to it but I prefer the non-spicy one because my throat would probably be in the emergency state after getting kicked by the spice multiple times like oof 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 huh? Moving on to the gyoza, I liked how they had an option with 3 gyoza. Portion size was just nice for dinner at 9pm. Yes, 9pm. It tasted quite good but the filling was not that juicy. Service was not as bad as what Bo Sheng Cheng said or maybe I'm the pretty woman the chef saw. Yeah. Just kidding. If vegan bistro Jangara is top tier that I would travel 30 minutes for it too, wait till you see the last ramen spot. You will be shocked. Just one level below is their sister company, Ooh. Kyushu Jangara Ramen Harajuku Outlet, which serves meat and vegan options. Even though it was 3pm in the afternoon, the queue was still very long, but let's see the Google review. Fantastic vegan ramen, finally a place that meat eaters, veggies and vegans can eat ramen at. 5 stars. Morton Copenhagen, a Google review expert, commented, I had the vegan ramen, I do not plan to come back, never. I had fun with other guests, ooh really? But the food is not to my taste. Sorry, one star. We shall see if the food is to my taste or am I the same as Morton Copenhagen. There are two vegan options and I got the Kumamoto ramen which uses burnt garlic oil to enhance the flavor of tonkatsu without using the tonkatsu itself. There were wood ear mushroom, spring onions, bamboo shoots and seaweed. The noodle texture was al dente so it had the bite to it. The broth was packed with umami flavour so and the burnt garlic oil really elevated it with the extra smoky flavour. Let's try the meat now. The mock meat used was the same as Vegan Bistro Jangara. It was the spongy soy meat that soaked up the broth really well didn't really taste like extra meat but it was still good. I would have to disagree with Morton Copenhagen as the ramen was to my taste. Thumbs up! And I did not have fun with other guests since we were separated by a panel. <laughs> We have arrived at Ippudo. Best vegan ramen. The broth is so creamy and yummy. Tastes like coconut noodle from Myanmar. 100% recommended. 5 stars. The lowest review was Please note that this is a lower quality store than the regular Ippudo. There were no bean sprouts on the table and there were no bean sprouts for the ramen itself. 1 star. Is it going to be a lower quality store or 100% recommended ramen shop? Let's find out. As a creamy broth and truffle lover, I had to get the Shiro Maru ramen and also a side of gyoza. The ramen looked stunning with a big slice of vegan pork. It was a soy milk tonkatsu like ramen with truffle oil. So test. The broth is very creamy, truffle -y. I love it. The noodle used was whole grain noodle. It felt a little overcooked, so it was missing the extra bite. <clears throat> Not sure if it tasted like coconut noodle from Myanmar because I've never tried it. Haha. <laughs> but I got to agree with some of the reviews about the vegan pork slice. It keeps falling apart. The texture is very soft. 
chopped. Yeah. Even though it had the chart on it, it tasted a little mushy and will just disintegrate in your mouth within a few seconds. Let's try the gyoza now. The gyoza looked crispy from the look of it. They weren't crispy but it's okay. The skin tasted very soft and there were mock meat, cabbage and other unknown ingredients. I just wished it was a bit thicker. I tried the gyoza with the yuzu chili at the side. It was not good. The vinegar was a better option. The missing bean sprouts on the table in review was not a problem for me. This person probably adds one cup of bean sprouts whenever he sees one. Overall, the food was great and the service was good too. Taking a break from the usual ramen, we have arrived at a vegetarian ramen shop called Tsukemen Zupa that serves Tsukemen which you dip the noodle into a separate broth or sauce. Let's review them. This was a great dish and I had an interesting talk with the owner too. Love the Tsukemen 5 stars. It was a stylish Tsukemen 2 stars. Not sure how stylish it was to get 2 stars. Anyway, the ordering system was the very cool ticketing machine you often see in Japan. Everything was in Japanese. Luckily, there were pictures and I Google Translate to make sure I ordered the right one. For my vegan BVs, you can ask him to remove the egg when passing the ticket to him to make sure it's vegan. The thick noodle was served with a piping hot bowl of broth, which was super thick as well. The broth tasted like a rich tomato-based broth, kind of like a sweet Japanese curry, which was very different from other ramen I've tried. I thought the noodle would be QQ, but it was slightly overcooked. It was missing the bite. Wow. Good news, there was a huge portion of veggies, which was amazing since I don't really eat much vegetables when traveling. The lotus root was crunchy and if it was fried again, it would have been extra crispy, but it's okay, health comes first, right? Yes. The owner was very nice and we had an interesting talk since I was the only one there in an ungodly hour for dinner at 4.30pm. <laughs> It was indeed a stylish Tsukemen, not mind-blowingly good, but definitely worth more than 2 stars. Moving on to the most famous vegan ramen chain in Japan called Tea's Tan Tan. My first experience there from my previous Japan trip was quite bad. I remembered it tasted bland and it was just not it. Great vegan ramen. I came back for another bowl, pretty fast and reasonable price. Vegan Oasis in Narita Airport. 5 stars! I will give food a second chance. So here I am ordering the sesame tanban men with chashu and cheese and a side of gyoza. I got my food within 10 minutes. I would assume it's pretty fast. Price-wise, it was a little bit more expensive when compared to other ramen shops that were around 1,200 yen. But I guess it's okay since there were lots of components to this ramen. There were vegan cheese, peanut butter, tantan sauce, mock meat and lots of veggies. The broth looked super rich and creamy and once I mixed everything, it looked even creamier, OMG. I've concluded that I prefer Korean dumplings way more than Japanese dumplings. I like them thick and extra juicy, which is not the case for Japanese gyoza, but they are still good nonetheless. Now, for the best vegan ramen I had in Tokyo was at this unassuming ramen spot that I didn't even save on my mask goal list. It's called Jikaise Mensho. We had the most delicious vegan ramen at this place. Location is very convenient in Shibuya. Really enjoyed the food and the service. Thumbs up, smiley face, 5 stars. Got the vegan tantan men. Death, the best I've had in Japan, but pales in consideration to what we get in New York. TBH, sad face. We just do vegan better, I guess. 3 stars. I ordered the vegan tantan men and it looked so good. OMG. There was a bush of spring onion, bamboo shoot, red onion and the vegan minced meat. Let your slurping begin. One slurp and I was transported straight to heaven. Literally, because my phone didn't record me disappearing from earth after the first bite, in that split second, I'm gone like lightning. The rich, creamy, slightly spicy and umami packed broth was perfectly balanced with chewy noodles. The noodles are nice and al dente Ooh. and crunchy veggies which added interesting texture and flavour to this bowl of ramen. Oh, I'm like hot. Not sure which ramen shop in New York Palavi Samba Seven was talking about in the review. They would taste better than my favorite ramen in Japan. Just kidding! Taste is subjective, but if you think that this is also the best ramen in Japan, we are besties. Just, just.
just kidding. Amazing! Moving on to the next category, which is Japanese food that's not ramen. Starting off strong, we have Izakaya Masaka. Izakaya is a type of Japanese restaurant where you have light meals while drinking alcohol. Despite arriving just before 7 pm, we were advised the restaurant had met capacity. We decided to come back the next day to try again and wish we hadn't bothered. One star. Amazing vegan food. We were shocked that everything we had was vegan. The food was flavorful and the texture was very much mid like. Five stars. Let's check out this place. The first time I came around 7 15 pm, there was also a sign showing max capacity. I came back the next day at 6 pm and managed to get a seat before it got crowded. I ordered the gyoza, karage with tata sauce, deep fried mitake mushroom, rice onigiri, and since it's an izakaya, I ordered royal milk tea highball. The karage with tata sauce looked amazing. The outside was fried to perfection, and the inside looked super juicy ooh, and tender. Ooh, 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 ooh. And you probably can't tell the difference from a chicken karage. Rishi, tata sauce is very nice. It's like egg mayo. <laughs> The tata sauce paired absolutely well with the karage since it was slightly acidic which balanced the dish really well. You can pair it with some rice from the rice onigiri. It's just rice. The deep fried mitake mushroom was even more amazing. Crunchy, crunchy. Picture this. Perfectly seasoned and fried to perfection. Crispy mushroom. If there was an extra set of tata sauce, it would have been even more perfect. But props to them for having a pile of cabbage on the side to keep the meal healthy and balanced. Fresh. Many people said that you can pass on a gyoza, but there was nothing else on the menu that caught my eye. Surprise, surprise, it was really mediocre, but the way they wrapped the gyoza was very innovative. Royal Milk Tea Highball the vegan royal milk tea highball was not it. Maybe because I expected it to be sweeter and milkier. I feel like a normal highball with lemon might be better than this. The food was indeed amazing. Thumbs up! The day we couldn't eat izakaya masaka, we went to Two Foods which was around the same area because I really wanted to try the omurice too. Nicole Kohlberg said cold food, one star. Phenomenal food, the teriyaki burger is to die for. Their om rice is so realistic and the donuts are next level. A plus 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 exclamation mark 5 stars. Other than the omu rice, the other item looked really good as well and just nice they had a platter for everything. We ordered a side of BBQ tortilla chips too. Precious. It was super crunchy and it tasted both tangy and savory at the same time. It's very cheesy because of the paprika powder, spicy barbecue sauce, and vegan cheese sauce. Ta da! I've ordered everything. We have omu rice, curry, butter, chicken, teriyaki, avocado burger, and nachos. The omu rice covered in a silky and fluffy vegan omelette made from carrots and white beans. Ooh, that looks like egg. Was topped with a demi glaze sauce. The sauce tasted like black pepper and teriyaki oh, sauce at the same time. It's very soft. It has a texture of the egg. It doesn't taste like egg, but it's very soft. Butter chicken curry. Big bite. The butter curry tasted very rich and flavorful and was balanced well with the pickled veggies on the side. It's chicken. Tastes like pickled chicken. Next was the teriyaki slider burger that was stacked. It had tartar sauce, avocado, and the patty was drenched with sweet and spicy teriyaki sauce. The patty was very good and juicy, and the avocado made the burger mm. extra creamy too. Mm. I also tried the raspberry pistachio donut, and the icing was citrusy, very light, refreshing, very nice. The dough is a bit... It's not the fluffiest. It's more like bread. The donut itself could be fluffier but it was still good. All the food was served hot except for the donut, obviously. That's fine. And they were close to being phenomenal. This onigiri shop called Onigiri Maru Toyo at Tsukiji Market had many locals queuing so I decided to get one sort ume onigiri. For a freshly made onigiri this size priced at 253 yen was a stew. Not only that, the amount of pickled plum and seaweed was insane. It was a burst of sweet, savoury and sour combination. Um, 
more sourdough, but the plum onigiri from the convenience store still has my heart. Also, at Tsukiji Market, there is a matcha shop called Matcha Sten Muruni that offers soy milk, which is really rare in Japan. This was a very high quality matcha latte. You can sip on it while working at your family or friends enjoying their seafood. Yummy! What's a Japan trip without eating the most famous food in Japan? It's sushi time at this conveyor belt sushi restaurant called Himarari Sushi Shintoshin. The pricing is superb. Every sushi is priced at JPY 150, super cheap compared to any sushi we have eaten in India. And of course, super tasty, must go place. 5 stars. Cash only. No Japanese in there. Only tourists. Low quality. Don't recommend. 1 star. There were 7 vegetarian sushi on the menu, and I ordered 6 of them and also one bowl of edamame. I was craving avocado maki and it wasn't on the menu but you are able to request it and I did and I got what I want. Yummy! I really enjoyed the sweet and savoury simplicity of the inari sushi, the creamy richness of the avocado rolls and the crunchy yet soft pickled radish and dried gourd maki. The dried gourd sounds weird, but it's like a thicker version of pickled radish. Ume and shishoru. Each bite was a mix of texture and flavors, proving that vegan sushi can just be as satisfying and diverse as seafood. One downside was that the chopping board was shared, so if you are strict about it, you might want to pass this place. We went back for our last dinner in Tokyo and I ordered my favourites which were the Inari Sushi, Avocado, Picket Radish and Dried God Maki. I was being an influencer that day because they made space for Inari Sushi to be on the conveyor belt and when it came back to me, there were no more Inari Sushi left. So if you are travelling with non-vegans, definitely try out this place. The third spot is this shop serving Japanese western style breakfast that is fully vegan. The best breakfast spot in Japan. We were here every day we were in Tokyo. The food felt so fresh and the entire place had a very relaxing vibe to it. 5 stars. This Japanese person wrote, I haven't been to this place so I can't rate it. 1 star. Sir, I guess you did rate it. Before going to Japan, I was really excited to try the sando but I guess my brain had diarrhea. I decided to order a Tata Wasabi burger instead. Let's go. It's a big bun. Big buns. I'm a boy that's very inappropriate. McDonald's fries. Let's eat. Mmm, the sauce is really nice. You can taste the wasabi. Oh, it's dripping. I only got a small bite of the cutlet. Another bite. <laughs> The mock meat tasted like regular mock fish and the texture was nothing mind-blowing but I really like the tata sauce that had a kick it's of wasabi to it. The wasabi is not that, you know, it makes your nose burn. No, this is like very subtle. It's perfect. The bun was very soft and fluffy on the inside and perfectly toasted at the bottom. Fluffy. After all, having a brain diarrhea wasn't too bad even though the burger didn't really look Instagram worthy. I guess that's why they asked if I could I understand, understand that even though it looked mediocre, it was actually good. Cooling the heat off with a dessert, I ordered a matcha kakigori with ice cream and red bean paste. Almond ice cream. Oh. Ta-da! The combination of the sweet red bean paste, velvety smooth creamy ice cream and the soft yet slightly crunchy shaved ice drizzled with matcha syrup was amazing. Mm. The matcha, oh my god. I loved every single meal I ordered and the place really had a relaxing vibe especially for introverts like me where you can enjoy your meal in your own little bubble. It's time for pastries and dessert. Ooh. Wyatt Bon Bon is a dessert Ooh. shop serving Japanese style vegan dessert like parfait and crepe. 5 stars for the plant based parfait. Dessert is the star here. It was the perfect amount of sweet and I love the amount of cream added and they are huge. 5 stars! Went there because of all the good reviews but I was quite disappointed with the desserts. They were huge and pretty but way too sweet. 2 stars. 
Each person has to order one item which is the worst. Anyway, we got a matcha azuki parfait, chocolate mocha banana parfait, berry and berry crepe brulee, and a vegan soft cream. The parfait started off with a thick layer of whipped cream, and hidden underneath were the matcha and chocolate cream. The matcha parfait had chewy mochi and red bean on top. The whipped cream was light and creamy at the same time and the texture was similar to non-vegan whipped cream. But at this point, I feel like it's the bare minimum since it's most likely mass-produced from what I saw when I ordered a vegan crepe in Kamakura and the vegan whipped cream was pre-packed. But we'll never know. There were peach tree in the second layer of the matcha parfait followed by a layer of matcha jelly and also coffee jelly for the chocolate mocha parfait. The crepe brulee was nicely decorated, but the crepe looked a bit too white. It was filled with whipped cream, strawberry jam and rice crackers at the top and had a caramelized top part like a creme brulee. It's very thin, but it has no flavor. But the cream is very creamy. creamy, creamy. The vegan soft cream tasted soft and creamy. And the almond sprinkle at the top gave it an extra crunch to it. Overall, Wyatt Bonbon was quite mediocre, but it's one of the only few shops that serve vegan parfait in Tokyo. And if you really want to try it, go ahead, I guess. Otherwise, IKEA would be a better place to go for dessert, which we will see later in the video. When I saw that a non-vegan bakery had vegan melon pan, I added to my list immediately. This bakery is called Mason Land Main. Overpriced and bad service, root stuff will not be coming back. One star, very expensive, food is amazing, five stars. The first time the reviews match each other, amazing. At a price of 350 yen, I think it's pretty decent. Oh, hi, gozaimasu. I got two melon pan, one vanilla, and one frambose. The crispy and golden exterior gives way to a soft, pillowy center. Let's try the frambose now. I don't know what's frambose, but it's pink. I just did a Google search and it's framboise raspberry. I can't taste the raspberry flavor. There's no flavor. This, oh my god. The vanilla from this is good. It's the perfect level of sweetness. And it's buttery. Oishi. Pretty decent and tasty vegan melon pan that weren't as overpriced as stated on Google review. Plus point for having seats inside the bakery because it was burning hot. Another popular shop for vegan Ooh. tourists in Japan is Hatoya's vegan fruit sandwiches in Asakusa. One strawberry. One strawberry, okay. Must try! These have to be the best vegan fruit sandwiches in town. You won't believe the cream is vegan. It's thick, creamy, and just the right level of sweetness. Five stars! The strawberry cream sandwich is made with ordinary white bread. The cream in the middle has a sweet taste. The whole thing is not harmonious and has a single taste. Two stars! I have with me the fruit sandal. I got the strawberry one. After Passing by countless of fruit sandal in convenience stores, I finally got to try my first vegan fruit sandal. Mm, so creamy! The strawberry is very sweet. The bread is alright. Oh, I'm so cooling for this hot summer. I'm like literally melting. The only complaint was that the bread tasted a little stale and was not as soft as I wanted it to be. It's all cream. You truly won't believe that the cream is vegan. Mm. I found another fruit sandal shop called Fruits and Season. The exterior looked super classy. What about the reviews? Honestly, it wasn't so delicious that I regretted spending 1,800 yen on it. I think it's better not to buy it unless you really like fruit sandwiches. One star. Super tasty vegan fruit cream sandal in a large variety of different fruit flavors, including mixed fruit. Five stars. The selection of fruit flavor was definitely huge, and I got the mixed fruit sandal. I thought it was 788 yen since the menu wrote 788 slash 1080 yen. Turned out it was 1,080 yen. $10 for a sandal. I was too shocked to comprehend it, but somehow I walked out with a $10 mixed fruit sandal in my hand. Not sure what happened. At the back, there's two kiwi. Banana. Kyoko. Let's try the banana now. The fruits were all super sweet, and the bread was a lot softer and fluffier than the fruit sandal from Hatoya. It's so good. But if the bread is softer, it will be best. But I would have to agree with the one star review. I think it's better not to buy it unless you really like fruit sandwiches. Because 1,080 yen for a fruit sando is yeah! insane. Yeah! Diving straight into the ocean is a shop called
called Taiyaki Hiragi selling fish ship pancakes. Let's see the review. The only vegan Taiyaki spot that I found in Tokyo, lots of filling inside, delicious and very satisfying, 5 stars. It was frankly not delicious, I bought it but I ended up stopping halfway through eating it. I was looking forward to it but I'm disappointed. 1 star! There were so many random 1 star reviews from Vietnamese people. <laughs> I think the shop triggered an entire closet. Haha, <laughs> I got my taiyaki. Oh my god, I almost dropped it. Mm. Oh my god. The amount of red bean is insane. The taiyaki was packed full of red bean paste in a golden and crispy fish body. Perfect level of sweetness also. Mm. You wanna eat? Yum, yum, yum. This was a lot thinner and crispier than the one I had in Kamakura, but both tasted very good. So if you want to try out vegan taiyaki, this is a place to visit. It was frankly delicious, but I stopped halfway like the one star review because I needed to try out more places for my babies. Oh my. We just had some loss there. They were sitting on top of each other. I'm in shock. Sir? Sir? There is a vegan donut shop called Sunday Vegan. Don't worry, I went there on a Friday and it was opened. The vegan donut were the best donut I've ever tasted in my entire life, especially because I don't really like dessert. They are too sweet. I Y K Y K. Yes, all the donuts are vegan. Double confirmed with the staff. Um, hello. If they are not vegan, why are they called Sunday Vegan? Hmm? The food is delicious, but the staff's attitude is business-like and very unpleasant. One star! The interior of the donut shop looked super cute with the pretty display of all the donuts. I ordered a caramel and cinnamon donut. While I was paying, I accidentally gave her a big note and I think I triggered her because she was not smiling anymore. Oopsie. <laughs> but it's my fault. Okay. Starting off with the cinnamon sugar. So fluffy! It was a pillow of fried perfection that had a blend of light, airy dough, and a sprinkle of cinnamon sugar around it. So simple yet delicious. Biting through the fluffiest caramel donut and seeing how incredibly creamy and airy the cream was, was an experience itself. It was so fluffy. It had the perfect ratio of soft and creamy with the perfect amount of sweetness. Looking at it makes you want to squish the cream out so badly. So squish it! I got another one. <laughs> the chocolate cream was not as generous as the caramel one and it was less fluffy compared to the normal donut. Ended on a lower note but overall it was an amazing donut experience. Just remember not to give her big notes like I did. Moving on to another fully vegan bakery called Universal Bakes. There are two branches in Shimokitazawa. Universal Bakes Nikome, which is more famous for their donuts. And Universal Bakes and Cafe, which sells small toast and artisanal bread. Christopher gave one star and here's what Christopher said. Nothing. Delicious. It is hard to find vegan food in Japan and this place excels in quality and service. A jewel in Tokyo's food dot dot 5 stars. I got a gluten-free matcha donut and a cinnamon sugar donut from Universal Bakes Nikome. Even though I really wanted to thrift, it was too hot so I just went straight to Universal Bakes and Cafe. After a 20 minute walk, I'm here at their second brunch. Let's go in. The French toast looked too good to pass, so I had to get it with an oat latte. After ordering the French toast, I was feeling ravenous. And guess what? I ordered another croissant. It's melting. The thick slice of bread was topped with a scoop of ice cream that was melting 2 grams per minute in this weather. Cranberry, nuts, and a layer of hard candy-like shell made out of caramelized sugar. Crispy, crusty. It's very caramelly. The melted ice cream made the french toast extra moist. Ooh. The nuts and the bottom layer of the caramelized sugar gave the french toast an extra depth of texture. Let's try the oat latte now. The oat latte was just normal, typical tasting coffee. If it's too sweet, you drink some oat latte to balance it out. But if it's too bitter, you eat more french toast. Time. Crispy. I think this wheat flour instead of normal flour. Mm. It's less buttery. It tastes healthier. But it's still nice. And it's very crispy. Crusty. Like your egg. 
time for the Universal Bakes Nikumi Donuts. The gluten-free matcha donut was very good even though it had a mushy texture when chewing. It's mushy, but it definitely tastes the matcha. The cinnamon sugar donut, on the other hand, was extremely frothy and had some salt mm. sprinkle on it, which made it more balanced. Mm. Indeed, a jewel in Tokyo's food. Thumbs up! I have devoured this masterpiece. Just kidding. I still have more here. Marbury Vegan, a cute little vegan cafe serving lots of delicious looking dessert. Let's see the Google review. They got the best tiramisu. I love everything I tried. 5 stars. Taste is not good. The shortcake batter is dry and too sweet. 1 star. I had to order a strawberry shortcake to mark my first official one in Japan in tiramisu because it's tiramisu. This strawberry shortcake took me aback because it didn't look gluten free. And the fact that they used rice flour to make the sponge cake stew so light and airy was insane. Creamy! The tiramisu had a perfect amount of coffee flavour and the cream was so creamy but light at the same time which was so good. The spongy layer was also so good. So amazing. When I saw this vegan bakery shop, Tagon Gentle, mm. his pistachio koson, I had to try it no matter what. Tsupi492 rated 1 star and wrote various regrets. Sir, do you mind stating the various regrets you had? Nice little vegan bakery in Tokyo. They serve probably some of the best vegan bakes in Tokyo. Must visit if you get a chance. 5 stars. I ordered the pizza bread, pistachio koson, and matcha donut. They all looked amazing. Mm, freshly baked. The pizza bread had super cheesy vegan mm. cheese on top. So nice. Glorious. Very nice bottom. Wow. Pizza time. Mm. It was everything I needed in a vegan pizza. So warm, cheesy, and flavorful. OMG. Cheese that pulls. So good. Oh my god, looks so good. Ah, crusty. Somehow it was still mm. so flaky even though they were stored in the mm. fridge. <laughs> the ratio of cream to pastry filling looked lopsided. I love it. It's very flaky. The layers are very nice. <laughs> the matcha donut had a little poopy poopy cream popping out of the mm. butthole. It smells so good. Big bite. The matcha red bean donut was perfectly golden brown on the outside and the inside was packed full of earthy matcha flavour with bits and pieces of red bean. Wow, the donut itself is very nice. I have to agree with the 5 star review that they probably serve some of the best vegan bakes in Tokyo. They were not just a treat for my taste buds, but a work of edible art. You need to, no no no, you must visit this bakery when you're in Tokyo. For the last category, we have random food slash chain restaurants that have vegan options available. The first one is For a country with a smaller percentage of vegans compared to Singapore, it was amazing to see vegan options available. Anyway, I tried the plant-based sugar donut and kima curry filon, and both of which was so good. Even though the donut was not the fluffiest, it was still full of flavour and was not overly sweet. The kima curry filon was incredibly flavourful and the melted vegan cheese was to die for. It was so good! You can also have natto for breakfast at Yoshinoya or any shop that look like they sell beef bowl. They would most likely have a side of natto. It's vegan if you don't add the soy sauce looking packet. So just mix in the natto, horseradish and green onions into the rice until it's extremely slimy. The rice in Japan just hit different which made it 100 times better. Last but not least, we have IKEA. Their plant-based range was just as amazing as I got their plant-based fried chicken and ramen ice cream at such an affordable price, but the quality was still so amazing.
that's the end of our ultimate vegan food tour in Tokyo, Japan. If you guys enjoy it, I might consider making more of it because I'm currently broke and my channel is still not monetized. If you didn't enjoy it, I'll be A, B, C, D press and still make more of it because I have too many backlogs, two countries to be specific. Hmm, coming soon.